I have prepared a little demo where we can see the script in action. I have a source database called UP19. It's a non-CDB. I want to migrate it into a container database and rename the database to PDB1. For ease of use, I have a shared NFS mount point, which both servers have access to. I store the scripts and the ARM and backups on that share. Let's see how it works. I'm connected to the source database, and this is the shared NFS mount point. We can see here the M5 driver script. But first, let's go into the CMD directory where we have two files. There's a properties file and a table space file. I'll start by connecting to the source database. And first, I enable blockchain tracking so my incremental backups will be lightning fast. Then I generate a comma separated list of all the table spaces in my database excluding system and sysargs and all the undo and temporary table spaces. I take the comma separated list of table spaces and put it into my table space file. Now we can look at the properties file. Here I tell the script which database to migrate. There's information about the source database, Oracle Home, SID and such. Also information on how I want to run the data pump export. Some methods to configure Armand like number of channels and section size. And if I use recovery appliance, there are some more advanced features. I'll leave them blank for now. Let's start by making the first initial level zero backup. I call the driver script with L0. It'll start Arman and create the backup. I can see that the backup scanned five gigabytes, that's my entire database. And since it is a level zero, it also outputted more or less the same. It's a full backup, makes sense. In a subdirectory, I can see the backup sets that were, that were created by Arman. Now I switch to the target host and I have access to the same NFS mount point. I connect to the container database and create a new PDB called PDB1. The driver script, when it did the backup, created a restore script that I can use on the target to restore the data files. I can have a look and here we can see the restored all foreign data file commands and a list of all the backup sets that were created by the backup script. So now I can just call Arman, connect to the PDB that I just created, and specify the restore script. And now the magic happened. The command will examine the, back the backup sets and do whatever it needs to do. It's a good idea afterwards to look at the log file from the operation. I can do a simple grab and find and see if I can find warn or aura in the log file. No occurrences, all looks good. Now back on the source system, I'll do a level one incremental backup. I simply specify L1 to tell the script that I want to do level one backup. I can see here because of blockchain tracking that I'm scanning far less and outputting far less because I'm using blockchain tracking and it is a level one backup. Again, there is a new restore script generated that I can use. Let's have a look. It looks more or less the same, still restore all foreign data files command and a new set of backup sets. Again, I use Arman, connect to the PDB and specify the new restore script. And then we can have a look in the log file. All looks good, no errors. Now I switch to the source side. I'll connect to the database. My app schema has a few tables and I'm gonna create a copy of one of the table so we can see that all data is brought along into the target database. We call it history two. Now I'll start the final level one incremental backup. 
I need to specify the system password so the script can set the table spaces in read-only mode. After that, the final level one backup begins. And then we can do the data pump transportable export. That's it. And I can see that the RMAN backup did scan few uh, more bytes and output more bytes because I created a copy of the table, but still far less than the complete side of the database. Now I can shut down the source. We don't need it anymore. On the target, I can see a new restore script, L1F. It's the level one final. I start RMAN, connect to the PDB, and use the restore scripts. This will uh, recover the data files up to the last point. Again, I check the log files. All looks good. Now I'll connect to my PDB and I find the directory path of the directory object data pump deer. I need to put my data pump dump file into this directory so data pump can import from it. There is also an import driver script that I can use. I need to fill in a little information in the import driver script about my target database, Oracle Home, SID, and a connect string directly into the PDB. And I can see that the import driver script, one of the parameters is the last restore log. So let me find that. And then I can call the import driver script. I specify my data pump dump file. I specify the last RMAN restore log file, and I start in test mode. This will generate a parameter file for data pump that I can investigate for correctness. I can see that everything has been filled. The script scanned the restore log, found all the data files, and added those into the transport data file parameter in the parameter file. So now I can switch from test mode to run mode to actually execute the commands. First, the script will create a guaranteed restore point in my target database, and then it'll proceed with the data pump transportable import. When it completes, you need to scan the data pump log file to see if there are any issues that prevents you from continuing. But for now, I'm just gonna connect to the target database. I can see all my table spaces are available and online. My schemas are there. And in the app schema, I can find the history two table, which was the copy I created. I can verify that all data has been brought along.